he wants you, the creator of the heavens and the earth, allows you to play a part in your life. And he wants that. I want to go back one slide for me. Philippians 2, 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God who works in you. You have to allow God to work in you. And the thing I love most about being a pastor is because you can stand back there and say, no, you're a liar. And then I can go, no, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13 says, God who works in you. That's his words. That he has to play a part in your life. In this race that you run, it's not all just you. It's not all just God. But he has to to be in it. Go one more slide, Maury. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's Jesus speaking. I put that in red because in scripture it's in red. And this is Jesus standing there saying, and let me read that one more time. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Once again, my favorite thing about being a pastor, especially the teens when they look at me and go, no, you're a liar, didn't you? I go, no, John 15, 5 tells me that you can do nothing without God. And for some of you, like I said before, you might be, man, he's kind of harsh this morning. Didn't expect this from the youth pastor. If I have the last opportunity to stand before you, I'm going to speak truth to you and let you know that these are God's words and this is what he has to say. I love studying the scripture and understanding different things because in the race that I run, I have to allow him to be a part of that. Last slide, Maury. 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly, for physical training is of some value. But godless, uh, godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. That's one of those scriptures when I read it, I just go, yes, amen. One, because I don't like to work out physically. And it just tells me right there. <laughs> for physical training is of some value. So for all, the, all of you that are diehard workout people, uh, scripture right there. <laughs> but godless, uh, godliness has value for all things. That's that hope that God leaves us with. Of godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Amen? Amen. Ah, I thought I'd get nobody in that, but thank you. <laughs> but that is that hope. That we study Paul and we listen to what he has to say in Philippians chapter 3 of running this race. And it was so crazy because when I was studying this chapter, the first thing that popped in my head, and I may sound really weird, but Scrooge. Scrooge popped in my head. Because in the beginning of chapter 3, Paul refers to his past. In the middle of chapter 3, Paul starts talking about his present. And towards the end of chapter 3, he talks about what is to come. And if you know the story of Scrooge, he's visited by three ghosts, past, present, and future. 
and I may sound weird because I'm a youth pastor and I refer to things as kid movies, but the connection between those things. I wonder if Charles Dickens actually got the story for that from that. Even the fact that he was visited by three ghosts and Paul was blind for three days. It's just weird how my mind works, I guess. But if I leave you with something this morning, it would not be that get ready, prepare for that race. It would be you're running the race right now. What are you doing with that race? As Jeremiah referred to, there's a lot of us that go in January and we do our mission trips. Speaking of mission trip, Jeremiah's team is at, in Louisiana right now. But we, we get that mission trip out of the way in January and then we go, 2011 is clear. I did my service to God. I am done. That race goes until death. That race is consistent. It's constant. We never know how, how long it's going to be. We don't know when it's going to come to an end. But if it's about you, you're not going to make it. If you rely completely on God, you're not going to make it. But if you allow God to be in you and work through you, he will provide you the strength. He will give you the blessings. He will provide everything that you need. So as you leave here this morning, and as you continue to run your race, those of you that claim to be followers of Christ, that it wouldn't stop here on January 2nd, 2011, as you walk out of these doors, but that the race would continue as you walk to your car, as you get into your car, as you drive to wherever you go for lunch, as you go through the rest of your life, you would run the race and you would allow God to work through you, to be a part of it in everything that he wants you to be and everything that he wants you to become. Don't lose touch of it. Paul's message is very clear in Philippians 3. Strive for what's ahead. Strain and keep going and keep going and keep going and don't give up. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this message that you've given to us. God, the words that Paul wrote, that as Jeremiah shared last week, of thinking back, maybe in 2010, maybe three years ago, to mistakes that we've made, to things that people have done against us, but God being able to forget that, being able to be let go and move forward. God, that as we run this race, that we would allow you to work in us, that it wouldn't be about us, but God, it would be about you coming into our lives in everything that we do in this race of life. God, we praise you in so many, so many different ways for your grace and mercy and who you are. As we begin 2011, God, that we'd be able to take a step forward, take